Okay, so going back again to our uh, our lecture, um, we'll now discuss the roller bearings, uh, the um, different types of roller bearings as specified in our pass. So first, we have this cylindrical roller, and it's something like this, except that the uh, that the rolling element is a cylindrical roller. So as the name implies the shape of the rolling element is a cylinder and approximate length to diameter ratio ranges from 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 3. So if it's not a ball, then it's a uh, cylindrical roller or other types of um, roller bearings. And commonly, they are used for heavy radial loads. Again, if we understood the, the concept of point contact and line contacts, then we can, uh, I mean, we will not get lost when we talk about the application because rolling element, they have line contacts, so of course they can, um, they can accommodate heavy radial loads as compared to the ball bearings. Okay, and it says here, also among the other types of roller be bearings, they have the highest speed limit. So compared to other shapes like the tapered and what else? Compared to um, the spherical rollers, like the barrel shape that I said, just take note that I use the term barrel shape, but it's um, spherical roller. Okay, so uh, another one is this needle bearing. So the needle bearing is basically a cylindrical roller bearing except that it's very thin. So the length to diameter the ratio is 4 is to 1. And the application is if um, we, and here's an example actually. So right here I have a needle bearing. So you see the rollers, they're actually, um, I mean in terms of the length to diameter ratio, um, they have higher uh, higher value so the application of this is um, you want to increase the loading capacity except that you uh, you have a constraint in terms of this let's say in terms of the diameter so how do you increase the capacity then that is by increasing this um, this line contact so that's the um, that's the needle bearing Okay, what else? Uh, we have this tapered roller. So the tapered roller bearings, they are designed to support uh, combined loadings. So here's an example of the tapered bearings. So combined loadings, that means it can support uh, thrust loads or axial loads in this direction, and it can support radial loads as well. However, in terms of axial loads or thrust load, it can... Uh, it can support only one direction you see right here so if here's our um, our loading direction then it can support that let's say he, this one is fixed I mean it's uh, firmly held by some support so if there's a thrust load then it can it can actually support that but if my loading is in this direction uh, in the other direction then you see that it cannot support that so just take note of that you can take only one direction of the thrust load okay and just like our um, our angular contact so we have this um, angle of contact in terms of um, in terms of illustration so it can support thrust loads and we can have also uh, a tapered bearings that's that has this shallow angle or we can have a steep angle and if you try to think about it um, if we have this um, if we have this shallow angle then our thrust capacity so our thrust capacity is lesser as compared to if it is a steep angle but the radial capacity is heavier as compared to this um, compared to this uh, this steep angle okay so that's it and also this type of bearings is also a available or may be configured as single or you can use it back to back or face to face
contact just like our angular contact okay and what else we have this spherical roller um, which has this barrel like shape and we have a straight roller thrust so that means that it's a thrust bearing but the roller is a uh, it's a straight roller it's a cylindrical unlike this one this is a thrust bearing except that the rolling element is a ball so when you say straight roller thrust then just imagine that the rolling element is a straight or a cylindrical uh, roller and when you say tapered roller thrust then it's a thrust bearing but the rolling element is tapered okay so what else now let's talk about the specifications so how do we specify the bearings so the bearing is basically defined or specified in terms of some prefixes and so, and some basic bearing number and some suffixes so uh, this is just the the basic specifications but the details of these prefixes and then the the basic bearing number and the suffixes they actually varies between uh, or varies among the manufacturers um, so we'll just discuss based on what the PAS has, uh, has for us okay so here's the basic bearing number so we have some some prefix right here that I did not include and some suffixes right here that I did not uh, include in this numbering system so right here we have um, we'll start with this with this two number right here two number from the right so here is our bore diameter so that refers to the to the diameter of this um, I mean of this part the bore so there are some codes um, I mean codes when I say codes it's a how you define it or how do you know if it's a 25 mm or it's a 30 mm diameter so there is a code um, just refer to the PAES 309 table 2 or just look at some manufacturers catalog and there are there are also um, I mean there are also available uh, examples for that okay and then the next here is the diameter series uh, which relates to the uh, diameter so uh, we can have the same bore but in terms of diameter we can have a larger diameter or we can have a smaller diameter and he the next one is the width series so the width series is uh, instead of the diameter it's just the width so we can have let's say 25 mm the bore is the same except that the width we can have a 25 mm bore but we have a uh, wider wider width and this one these two uh, this next two digits right here this is the bearing type or the bearing code and sometimes this is just one uh, one digit sometimes it's just two digit okay so here's the basic bearing number so now let's let's discuss this bearing type so right here in our uh, table 14 uh, dash 2 which is just taken from table 1 of past 309 so it says here that this is the type code so if it is one it is a self-aligning ball bearing if it is six it's a single row ball deep groove um, deep groove bearing or if it is uh, n a cylindrical roller or it can have some uh, some other other digits right here or symbols like n u n c uh, which just depends on the shoulder design so uh, when i say shoulder design this is it this is the the shoulder right here so it has to fit i mean if you recall in our uh, discussion about the step shaft so that's the uh, that should be or that should okay let me draw it here so if here's our step shaft then there must be s some shoulder right here or or a radius a fillet ra uh, fillet radius right here that should uh, that should correspond to this shoulder right here 
okay so that's the bearing type so if it's 51 then that's a ball thrust bearing okay and there are still many others uh, I mean in the manufacturers catalog you can also uh, you can also see other types so the width series and then the diameter series so here is our um, figure right here taken from the textbook so here's the basic abma plan for boundary dimensions and we say uh, abma that's the that's the uh, american bearing manufacturers um, association and right here from the from another textbook by i mean by robert mott uh, this one uh, there are actually other groups or organizations that's involved in setting the standard for the bearing industry so here we have these uh, abma or we have this abec or the iso or the ansi so they are uh, they are the ones that's uh, establishing the standards for for the bearings okay and when we say uh, I mean going back to our discussion about the dimension series and then the diameter series so right here you will see that here's the center line uh, center line of the shaft or the bore the center line and here's the radius of the bore so if we have a uh, dimension series of zero zero um, that means that we have a zero width and a diameter that's uh, that's zero so if we have a zero two uh, then that means that we have a zero uh, um, if we have um, you see here this is zero one two three so here basically this is just the the width right so zero here is the width zero 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 uh, I mean the next digit the, the zero two three four that's that corresponds to the diameter so in this width I, I mean in this width section uh, we can have a diameter that's uh, two three and four so you you would see the the difference in the sizes but the bore size is just the same so let's say if we have a 25 mm bore size but specified as 02 in terms of the um, dimensions of uh, the, the dimensions of the geometry then there's going to be changes now if we have a width series of one then uh, we have we have a wider uh, we have a wider width as compared to this uh, to this um, to this one to this zero zero now compare that to two zero so if we have a width series of number two then this is wider than zero and one okay so if we have a diameter series of four then that's the largest then followed by three then followed by two one and zero okay so that's the um, that's the uh, the basic a up map plan for boundary um, dimensions but there is also another um, another figure right here so right here uh, here's the center line and again this is the radius of the bore and uh, sometimes it's just classified as in terms of um, having those uh, having those numbers it's just classified as either it's uh, a light series or 100 series or 200 series or 300 series or 400 series so basically there is a changes in the uh, in the width and the diameter but the bore size is um, is the same Okay, so the next is what else uh, we're done with this and we're also done with this now that uh, next is the bore the bore diameter I 
And by the way, um, you would notice right here that the in terms of the with series we have uh, it's we have the zero one two three four five six seven but the narrow west is the eight okay and for the diameter series we have here uh, zero one two three four but the lightest or the uh, or the, the ones that that has the um, smaller dimension is this seven then eight nine zero one two three four so and the point right here is just it's not in proper order okay and in terms of of the bore diameter or the bore code so um, you would see right here that we have this 10 12 15 17 and 20 uh, that's in mm but the bore the bore code is it says here that if we have a bore code of 00, zero then that means it's a 10 mm if it's zero, 01 it's a 12 if it's 15 it's zero, 02 and if it's 17 it's zero, 03 now for 20 mm it's zero, 04 but starting from 20 up to 480 it's just simply uh, by a factor of 5 so that means if we have a If we have here, uh, if you can see the number right here, it says 205J, right? So here it is the 05. So 05 times 5, that is the, uh, I mean, that's going to be uh, 25 mm. So that means that the bore diameter is 25 mm. Okay, so again, just take note about the uh, starting from 20 to 400. 80 millimeter that's um, we'll just use the factor 5 okay so now um, for the suffixes uh, I will not discuss this and also the, um, the prefix but let's have some examples right here now here's an let's check this so here's the number HR 30 uh, to 05G now for the 30 you will not see the 30 here and uh, you can actually notice that there's no tapered roller bearings right here so so probably just check the manufacturer's catalog okay so here's the uh, 30205 so 2 refers to the 200 series or it's a I think that's the uh, light series and the 05 the 05 that's uh, that's the bore diameter so 05 times 5 or 5 times 5 that's 25 mm okay what else okay so this one is um, 1107 right s 1107 so let's check so this is basically uh, using a, a a different notation but the bore you will see here that uh, this is let's say this is the uh, the series the dimension series uh, this is 100 series and for the 0, 07 so 7 times 5 that's 35 mm so if we check this this is 35 mm okay next is this one Okay, so right here we have 6205Z. Now for the Z, that's the suffixes that refers to the, probably the shielding or if it has this uh, this this cover right here, because some bearings they, they don't have that um, they don't have that cover. So for the 05, that's uh, five times five, so this is 25 mm bore, and for the number two, this is 200 series, and for the six this is a single row ball or deep groove ball bearing okay what else um, let's have this uh, let's talk about this um, this bearing with housings okay so you would notice here that there is P207 um, basically this P right here that refers to the type of the housing 
and there are actually many types of uh, housing um, if it's space just simply means um, it's a pillow block bearing so this this shape right here and if it's two then that's just 200 series and zero seven that's seven times five that's 35 mm for the bore diameter and right here you will also notice that there are set screw um, right here so you'll use the allen wrench okay so you can have a um, better fit to the shaft okay another one right here is a you would notice here f204 so f stands for the housing the type of housing and this is a flange type uh, flange i mean flange bearing and um 20404 is just uh four times five this is 20 mm for the bore diameter and two is 200 series okay what else then let's check this uc it says here uc204-12 so we have suffixes right here and if you don't know that suffix then we just refer to the to the manufacturer's catalog and zero four again zero four times 5 and that's 20 mm and 200 series and the UC is a, um, is a bearing type which we don't have right here we don't have it here so it uses uh, another another specification okay so what else then uh, before we delve into the computations let's talk about some other topics like for example lubrications and in terms of lubrications, um, as we know that um, bearings, they are, I mean, although they reduce friction between the shaft and the, um, I mean, it allows rotation for the shaft, uh, there are actually contacting surfaces in, in the parts like the rolling elements and the raceways of these rings. Now, we need to have uh, lubrications as well for this so that we can have a, we can have an optimum performance so right here you would notice that in this um, uh, in this bearings with housings then there are there are grease fittings uh, we're in uh, something like an inlet for the for the grease okay so right here then it will uh, it will supply grease inside those um, those elements okay now how do we know which type of grease then there are actually uh, a table for that um, depending upon the the temperature ranges so we can have uh, actually in the textbook by Robert Mott there is a uh, group classification for the bearing lubrications uh, yeah, for the type of grease okay so we can have grease or oil and the difference is just simply uh, as we know grease is something like more more sticky then oil i mean oil is something like more fluid and and i think that's all i can say about that um what else we also have um dry lubrication so it's a bearing without the need of lubrication in the sense that uh there is no grease or there is no oil but rather the material itself is um there is a lubrication inside the material so that's how we uh, define the dry lubrication and uh what else now we'll talk about alignments issues um in terms of alignments we have already discussed the static misalignments like for example here if here's our two shafts okay so we can have um offset misalignments or we can have angular misalignments but this time we are going to to talk about in terms of the bearings so it should be uh, I mean the point here is if we install the bearings then it must be properly aligned so we can have misalignments like this so if it's not properly uh, properly positioned then there's gonna be uh, effect in the in the uh, let's see in the lifespan of the bearing and another type of misalignment is the dynamic misalignment so we, which means that if the if the shaft wobbles or something like that it's a dynamic uh, phenomenon then there's also going to be effect on the wear 
of the of the bearings. Okay, and uh, one last miscellaneous topics that we'll discuss, and these are all in our lecture handouts, is the um, is the seal. So seals and shields. So some bearings they have this uh, seals and uh, I mean sh seal or shields. Okay, so other bearings they have this. Uh, I mean without without seal. So that just simply means that if you select the bearings, then you just have to consider the external environment. If it is dusty or if it is a um, if it is not a clean environment, then uh, of course you would need to have some protection for the for the rolling elements and your lubrication as well. So that's why we need to provide the the shields. Okay, and what else? Uh, the bearing housing units. There are many. Uh, still many other types and now let's talk about the computations because this is actually the main the main topic for every machine elements that we discussed the design computations okay so there is what we call a right, let's write here design computations or calculations right so the first the first parameter that we'll describe is what we call as the bearing life okay and the bearing life this is referred to as the or symbol in the, in terms of this symbol this is l sub 10 or the l10 life uh, or the life of the bearing that just simply means that um, how long how long it will last or I mean <laughs> Um, usually we think of the bearing life as how long it will last so if it is rotating uh, at some RPM and then at some time interval then how long it will last right so that's our typical understanding for the bearing life but uh, this I mean in this bearing topic uh, we think of this bearing life as the um, as the life of the bearings of the, or the set of bearings like for example we have 1000 of these bearings that we will test it uh, we will test it simultaneously okay so again we are not just referring to one bearing but rather um, a group of bearings identical bearings uh, subjected to testing uh, I mean of course identical testing and then it's a um, it's a life in hours at some known speed so Imagine we have a lot of bearings and we subject this to uh, to some revolutions or I mean to some to some RPM, and then um, if we see that ten percent of this set of bearings, uh, let's say we have one hundred bearings, right? So if we have one hundred bearings, and if ten percent fails, then that's gonna be the uh, the life of the bearing, the specified life of the bearing. So in terms of in terms of the number of hours, so again we have these identical bearings, uh, a group of bearings. Let's say we have 100 bearings and we subject this to some uh, to some RPM, and then we record how long it will uh, it will take to start uh, making a or making an evidence of um, of um, a failure. So failure in terms of probably scratches or dents in the in the raceways so they have ways to to measure that but that's the uh, that's the meaning of this bearing life okay so it's a it's, it's a life referring to a group of bearings wherein 10 10 percent of that group uh, fails or um, will make a um, will make a or will make an evidence of failure in the in the parts okay so we can have spalling failures or cracking maybe or whatever failures that uh, that they test okay so 10% fails and 90% is still okay so that's the uh, rating life or the L10 life this is right here sometimes referred as the rated life okay and there is a there is an equation for that um, and if you check the um, uh, different textbooks or the manufacturers catalogs there are 
uh, there are difference for that or there are variations in in the expression of the uh, of this rated life okay I mean uh, an ex expression in this bearing life is uh, I mean this bearing life appears but another parameter is let's just write it here uh, this is the basic load rating okay so this is C this is referred to as C10 okay so the C10 or the sometimes depending upon the, um, the catalog or just simply the C because in our in our pass we have just this C value for the basic load rating like the one here in uh, in one of our our reference texts by Robert Mott so we have the basic number and right here we'll see the basic static load rating in pounds and the basic dynamic load uh, rating so it is already specified so it's something like the capacity of the bearing now another term that will come into play is the required um, the required uh, required capacity or actually this is the load side okay required capacity or think of it as the load side uh, it's always better to think about the capacity and then the the load side I mean capacity or in terms of the resistance side about the strength of the material and then the other one is in terms of the uh, how much load that you are going to put into it so there is an expression for that and how do we determine the required loadings so here's our uh, equation and this equation it just says that we have here the C required is just simply equal to the uh, equivalent equivalent radial load times the L10 the bearing life times some some revolutions uh, I mean the RPM of the shaft and then we raise that to 1 over K where in the K is that depends if it's a ball bearing or a roller bearing if it's a ball bearing that's just 3 if it's a roller bearing this is 10 over 3 and the denominator is a uh, constant so for ball bearings it's 25.6 if it's a roller bearings then it is 18.5 Five. So this is this the equation uh, that's found in our in our bias. So you might, uh, I mean, just don't be surprised if in some other references you might see another type of equations. So what we'll just use is the the bias for now. Okay. So um, I guess we will continue this in the next video.